action-packed month, and we're going to recap it for you here on the next Moto Champion Recap Show, brought to you by Yoshimira. That's right, we had a packed month featuring Team Hammer's Jake Lewis, Moto America's Superbike Points leader Cameron Bobier, and Barber Race 1 winner Roger Hayden. And we're going to show you all the best moments, and we're going to be announcing our winner of the season of giveaways for the month of June, sponsored by American Cargo. All month long, we've been prompting you to sign up for the weekly newsletter on the front page of nextmotochampion.com so that you can receive the newsletter full of great products, the magazine, and the talk show, but also so that you can be in the running to win an American Cargo Trooper backpack with a retail value of 180 bucks, along with other great prizes throughout the summer. April's winner, Matt Mayer, simply signed up for the newsletter and found himself one Speedway shelter richer for doing so. Last month's winner, Derek Yee, won himself a set of Bridgestone tires. Look at him, he's so happy. We'll announce this month's winner at the end of the show, but first, let's get to the highlights. All right, and we're back, and it may be round five for Moto America, but it's only round two for this guy. After an off-season injury, sidelined him for 10 long weeks, but he's back and better than ever. It's Team Hammer's M4 Sport Bike Track Gear.com Suzuki Super Stock 1000 rider. Number 85, Jake Lewis. Jake, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You know, uh, it's been been a busy past few weeks for myself and uh, all the big changes that have happened around me and uh, really looking forward to Road America this weekend. Uh, only my second round, but uh, really looking forward to it after a not so good weekend at Virginia. I was able to get some testing in this past week at Talladega and uh, really made a big step forward with the bike and with the team. So uh, excited for racing this weekend. Well, you just covered a whole bunch right there. So let's start from the beginning. You said you've been super busy lately, uh, starting with this past weekend where you won third or finished third place at the TT race. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, uh, after everything that happened with my contract, uh, you know, I kind of took a step back and just realized, you know, I started this for fun and just want to keep it fun. So I uh, actually just built a brand new Suzuki 450 for flat track and uh, saw the Springfield TT was this weekend. So I uh, just wanted to go do that, you know. Uh, my dad was really mad that I went and did it just because if I got hurt and something silly happened, uh, it wouldn't be good. But, uh, you know, for myself, I just need to do a lot of riding and uh, racing to get myself back into racing shape. So uh, I felt, felt like it was going to be a good opportunity for me. And then I uh, also got to watch the Springfield Mile on Sunday, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, it was a fun weekend. I would have liked to have been second or first, but Hayden rode really good. And uh, with I got a bad start, and then halfway through, I passed in the second, but then I lost my front brakes. And on a TT, I mean, you can't stop with no front brakes. So I uh, had to salvage a third place, which I was still really happy about. You know, I haven't raced at the Springfield TT since 2009. So uh, it's been a while since I've been, like, competitively racing flat track. So I was excited to get back up on the podium. Well, unfortunately, nothing happened. You got a third place. Uh, so that's all good for you. So let's move forward. How are you feeling, most importantly? Are you back to 100%? I'm close to 100%. You know, obviously, uh, I was off the bike for two months, so that was a big uh, impact to, like, you know, just my training and riding because uh, you can train all you want, but racing shape is pretty tough to race two races in one day. So at Virginia, I struggled a little bit late in the races just because I didn't have enough strength in my shoulder yet. But uh, we've had two weekends off now, I think it is, and I've uh, been able to do a lot of riding in between and actually going to go ride this afternoon, too, before I head out for Wisconsin in the morning. So, uh I feel like I'll be close to 100% for this weekend, and uh, Wisconsin's not a physical track, so uh, I should be okay, hopefully. And you said you're excited for uh, Road America coming up, but let's talk about a few things. Uh, the transition in particular, um, starting with the fact that you started the season with the factory Suzuki Superbike team and eventually had to go to the Superstock team. How did that affect you? You said it, it kind of made you stop and rethink about why you're racing in general, but elaborate on how that affected you. Yeah, you know, mainly uh, just I had no say so in what happened. Uh, unfortunately, I crashed a motorcycle the first day I got back from uh, two months of training in California, and uh, that's no one's fault but my own. So uh, I was on the sidelines the first three rounds watching, and obviously, you know, they hired Tony Elias, and he was doing a great job. So uh, for the team to build two more complete super bikes, the staff, the time, everything, you know, nothing worked out. But uh, fortunately for me, I signed with Suzuki through the 2017 season. So uh, 
obviously, you know, that took a lot of pressure off myself for when I come back and I have a job for next year. So uh, that's the main thing. Uh, but, you know, moving down to Superstock, uh, you know, I was a little bit bummed out about it at first, but obviously, you know, uh, not going to hang my head up on that and just keep moving forward. So uh, Team Hammer's got a lot of great history in the past, you know, bringing up Hawkins, bringing up Spees, and uh, they've had a lot of good riders and uh, have a good crew behind me. So, you know, we're just going to work hard and try to get some Superstock 1,000 wins, and Suzuki's coming out with a new 1,000 for next year, which they say is going to be uh, really good. Uh, so, you know, I have faith in Suzuki. That's why I signed with them for next year as well. But for myself, you know, it's just important for me to just keep going to these races and getting back into racing shape. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Moto America, all the races are right at the beginning of the season, and then we have a two-month break. So uh, got injured at the wrong time, but, uh, you know, just going to do my best. Well, it might be a good opportunity for to get uh, back in even better shape than you are now. But let's talk about, uh, you know, your super bike rookie season was a little bit of a struggle. So do you think this of this move as a digression, you know, going backwards? Or is this maybe where you should have started at in the first place on the big bike? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to say because uh, obviously in 2014, I had a really good 600 year and... Uh, when a factory team and one of the best teams in superbike racing approaches you and wants you to ride for them, and you can't turn that down. So uh, I feel like jumping in a superbike, you know, uh, my size and uh, the way I fit on the bike was obviously really good for superbike. But, you know, Cameron, Roger, and Josh were really strong that first year, and I had a lot to learn. But uh, throughout winter testing and uh, off season, I had a really good off season. So I was really looking forward to this year. So uh, it was a real bummer I got hurt, but, uh, you know, take it how it is and now going back down to super stock there's obviously some really good competition with Heron, Corti, Fong, Nap, Hayden I mean there's a lot of fast guys and uh, I gotta be on my game again and these two weeks off I feel like have helped me get back to where I need to be and I feel like I can battle for the podium and hopefully the race win in Road America. This week's Product Spotlight will have you asking the question, why is John wearing his dollar store sunglasses inside this dimly lit studio? The answer to that question is because I'm standing next to the high-vis neon green trooper backpack from American Cargo. You or someone you know may have been rear-ended while on their motorcycle by a driver who claimed that they never even saw them. The high-vis trooper backpack is specifically designed to avoid those types of accidents. The Trooper was designed for, well, anything and everything you can imagine. It's big, it's tough, it's perfect. Of course, it includes the interior and exterior pockets, tie downs and expected fittings and adjustments. There's a special laptop and tablet pocket and it's hydration compatible. Not to mention a place for first aid, a place for goggles and the ability to secure your helmet on the back. The one thing the Trooper is really known for is its butterfly harness. This is the quintessential element in Americans Cargo's approach to comfort and stability. Incorporating multiple fit and fitting adjustments and increasing the surface area, these straps are designed to work around your equipment and the way you move. Your chest, arms, shoulders, and core were carefully considered. The butterfly harness creates the functionality you need for the riding experience you want. There's a couple other features to mention. There's the retroflect material that makes you more visible at night. And I already mentioned that they make it easier to carry your helmet around instead of leaving on your motorcycle with a net that comes right out of this small compartment and attaches these metal D-ring hooks. Their store is specific for your laptop and space allowed for tools that will come in handy when you're out on the road. 
You know, when OGO started making women's purses and golf bags, I was afraid that we wouldn't have a luggage company for motorcycle riders. Lucky for us, American Cargo stepped in to focus on riders and developing the functionality and look specifically for what we need. Now the Trooper backpack is one of a number of really cool either backpack, hydration packs, or even pieces of luggage uh, from American Cargo. Um, you can pick these up for around $180 to $210. You can find more information on it at AmericanCargoWithAK.com. And that's this week's Product Spotlight. performance air intake systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. I tow motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Swing and a miss. And we're back, and he had a rough start to the season, but he's turned 2016 around and is now sitting on top of the points after Road America. He's a 2015 defending Superbike champion. He's a Monster Energy Graves Yamaha number one plate holder. Cameron Bobier. Cam, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Good, glad to finally have you on this season. Uh, we're gonna talk about the start of your season and where we are now, but we wanna talk about the most recent Endeavor World Superbike. You had a really impressive uh, Super Bowl. You went straight to Super Bowl two out of free practice, which surprised a lot of people. Uh, you had an incident in race one, but happy with a top 10 in race two. Talk about your weekend. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, it was really a last minute thing. Every Everything got put together. Uh, really last minute Keith McCarty called me I mean a few days before I left and uh, he was like yeah well uh, we're gonna look into booking your flight to send you over there Rick's gonna go with you Jake's gonna go with you and uh, and yeah like I said it all came together at pretty much the last minute but it turned out to be a really fun weekend Alpine Stars got me a couple suits made at the last minute uh, Bell had a uh, uh, sent a guy out um, that was already in the UK to help me out over there. And, uh, it turned out to be a really fun, really good weekend. The team welcomed me in with open arms and, uh, it was a good experience for sure. It was really tough. I mean, I struggled pretty bad on, uh, on Friday, just kind of relearning the track on a super bike. Cause it's a lot different riding around there than, uh, the last time I was there on a 125 about seven years ago or something. So uh but it was so much fun like i said the the team was super super happy to have me there and and uh met alex lowe's their their rider and gentoli the guy i was filling in for and and uh it was pretty cool racing on i mean racing on the world the world stage you know i uh was racing against a lot of guys that i've looked up to for a long time like Nikki hayden and and the uh, Tom Sykes and Johnny Ray, like those guys. So it was pretty cool to be inside the top 10 with those those guys, those big na big names. But I think definitely with a little bit of time, I could, uh, I could be further up for sure. Well, it's good to hear that you had a good experience over there. Uh, you impressed and served us well um, back home in the States. Your crew chief, Rick Hobbs, went on to explain some of the major differences between, say, the Moto America Superbike and the World Superbike, the, the R1. So for those Yamaha fans out there, give a little more technical um, breakdown of some of the major differences that you had to deal with over there. Yeah, for, so for here in the States, we, I mean, we run Superbikes, but they're not uh, – I, I guess I would say up to the level of super bikes over there. We're not allowed to run the oversized forks like they are, uh, little things like that. 
I think we have a cap on the um, our electronics over there. It's a little more open. So uh, I had to – they they just run their electronics a little bit different. Um, the oversized forks made the bike a little stiffer, uh, different swing arms, stuff like that. Uh, just overall, the whole bike felt different, different tires and stuff like that. So it was, it was a lot of stuff to get used to. Um, but, I mean, I did the best I could for the limited track time I had. I mean, we only had two hours Friday. And personally, I think that if I was able to do the race I did Sunday – like being able to finish in the top 10. And then uh, if I was able to do that Saturday, the race I did on Sunday, and then have a night to sleep on it, show up at the track ready to go uh, with a race under my belt and be able to race Sunday, I think it would have it would have gone a lot better. But, I mean, that's racing at the end of the day. And I was just – I was super happy to be able to finish, finish the race uh, in a decent position for the team and – yeah, the position wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, but I was happy with my, my pace, and I, I went faster throughout the race. And normally, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess normally you, you kind of fade throughout the race. So I was, I was happy with that. Well, top 10 is something to be proud of for sure. So you had a similar instance last year where they kind of threw you overseas, you know, threw you on a plane, threw you overseas uh, at a track you weren't familiar with. You were familiar with this one, though. Do you feel like this is a bit of a test? I mean, you're considered the next American hopeful to go all the way. Do you feel like they kind of test you in that way when they send you overseas in these kinds of scenarios? Maybe a little bit. I, I mean, I don't know. They were telling me that they were telling me, all right, no pressure. Just go over there and have fun with it. But then I start reading all the social media on, on uh, Thursday afternoon. I was like, oh, man, everyone's like, oh, yeah, the the Moto America relies on this weekend or something like that. The results of this. I was like, oh, man, like, gosh, that sucks. I don't want it to be like that. But I just tried to block that out and go have fun and. I mean, yeah, I was super nervous, though. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. <laughs> right, no pressure. You're just yeah. representing Moto America. No big deal. Yeah, exactly. But you are the champ for a reason. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at woodcraft-cfm.com. Hi, I'm Davis Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line. Uh, don't have to worry about overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. And Evans Coolant. Coolant. Got to have the best to go fast. K&N Performance Air Intake Systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. In this week's product spotlight, we're looking at a number of different products from K&N Engineering. Now, you probably know K&N because they've been making high-flow air filters out of Riverside, California since 1969. K&N high flow air filters use multiple layers of cotton gauze placed between bonded aluminum wire screens. Within each air filter, thousands of microscopic cotton threads absorb specifically formulated air filter oil to create a powerful filtering media. This media helps protect your engine from harmful contaminants and debris while increasing the airflow. This can allow your engine to breathe easier, increasing both horsepower and acceleration. k and also delivers premium oil filters built to withstand the high demands of racing conditions. These filters are designed with a high flow synthetic media that is engineered to provide high flow rates and outstanding filtration. They are ideal use with any premium synthetic and traditional oils. In order to ease maintenance, a 17 millimeter nut has been welded to the top to allow for easy removal. A heavy duty canister provides high burst strength while also adding extra protection from debris and rocks in that off-road environment. 
Just goes to prove that the people at k and are hardcore race enthusiasts and motorcycle riders because in addition to the 17 millimeter nut that they welded on top, they also pre-drilled this for safety wire. This is one of k and race spec high flow air filters and they are purposely built air filters for popular sport bike applications. There's fewer pleats and two ply cotton media for increased airflow over the standard k and high flow air filters. Of course, these are designed to increase horsepower and acceleration at the racetrack. They're washable, reusable, and it will fit directly inside your stock air box. Now, for these specific race-built air filters, fuel modification management will be necessary. These are designed for closed course competition use only. While you're at it, go ahead and order a can of Canon's air filter oil. It's specifically made and designed for cleaning and re-oiling Canon cotton gauze air filters. This will restore your airflow efficiency so that your air filter performs virtually like new. And in addition to that, look for the Power Clean degreaser. Power Clean is the only cleaner recommended for cleaning K&N filter elements. The high performance cleaner and degreaser is also used to remove oil, lubricants, grease, grime, and other deposits from most surfaces. Now like death and taxes changing our oil and air filters, it's just something that we're never gonna get away from, so save yourself some time and money and order these things in bulk. While you're at it, add the oil, add the degreaser. It's gonna make the whole project that much easier. We've got products from k and Engineering manufactured out of Riverside, California, and that's this week's Product Spotlight. I've been riding my whole life. I train every day. I'm going to be the best rider I can be. The bike is an extension of myself. It's also got to be the best. That's why I race with Saddleman seat covers. Each seat cover is handcrafted with the finest materials available. My seat has pleats stitched on the back, which let me know where I'm at on the bike. This is a huge advantage on the track, and my lap times show. This seat works so well that it's now available to the public. But honestly, it's one of those things you don't want the competition to know about. So don't tell anyone. Speaking of another great company, did you know that Yoshimura offers a refurbishing service? You can send them your old pipe and they'll make it like new again. Check out this video. When a customer buys a Yoshimura product, it's really we want them to think of it as a product for life. And result is that our customers need to be satisfied and that's, that's very, very high on our priority list. We're in the assembly department. This is the room where we assemble all the mufflers that we build and ship all over the world. The guys in here can build 250 to 300 exhaust systems a day. Not only do they build all the new systems, they also do maintenance, accident, and crash repair. Everything is serviceable. We build everything so that it can be rebuilt. Making the product simple to rebuild is important for both manufacturing and for the customer, the end user after they get done with a season or some track days and they need to rebuild their exhaust system. You do not have to purchase a whole new muffler. You just have to send it back in and they'll do it here. We've got dozens of packing part numbers just depending on the volume of the muffler and the performance requirements. We have two or three different blends of fiber material we use. Each application requires a different amount of packing. We found in dyno testing a muffler loses horsepower when it loses as little as 50 grams of packing. So we become really sensitive to the weight of the mufflers and really sensitive to how much packing we install in it. 
When it sounds a little bit louder or you see some discoloration from sound, we ask you to send your muffler in and it comes back in here to this room where the same guys who built the muffler the first time can um, take it apart, inspect it, and make it like new for you again. On occasion, people do call us up and say, you know, I think you made a mistake. This isn't my pipe. My pipe was this, this old, crusty, you know, brown, ugly pipe. And it's, no, that's what we do. We, we have just as much pride in our product when it's 20 years old as we do when it's brand new. Yoshimura wa uragiranai. That means you expect something from Yoshimura, Yoshimura will deliver. All right, and we're back. And he's won multiple superbike races in his career, but this one was long overdue. And we're happy to have him on to congratulate him on his victory. It's your race one winner from Barber, Yoshimura Suzuki's number 95, Roger Hayden. Roger, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time since we've had you on, so welcome back first and foremost. Um, obviously, we wanted to congratulate you on your win. So let's start by talking about that and how it's been a long time coming for you. Is the monkey finally off your back? You know, I think so. It was. Uh... Like you said, it's definitely a long time coming. Uh, the past year, I've been getting second so much, so close. It was uh, it was getting really frustrating. And then, you know, those last couple of laps with Tony, I was thinking, man, there's no way I can let this happen again. So uh, when I crossed that finish line, it was like, you know, like instant relief. Like I don't have to answer the question, when, when are you going to win? And you know, he can't close out a race and all that other stuff. So uh, I definitely feel like the monkey's off my back. And it was just, a, it was awesome for me. And, you know, I have a great team. You know, Yoshimura Suzuki, they're behind me 100%. And, uh, you know, my guys, they all, they all need a win as well. They bust their butts just like me. So uh, it was great for everybody. Okay, so let's talk about a few things here. First of all, um, not getting the race win the last couple of seasons has not been for a lack of effort, obviously. Like you said, you guys work really hard, you and your team both. But getting second all the time has to be somewhat defeating. So talk about the pressure and the buildup uh, to this point and how that at, at some point has to have an effect on you um, and your concentration during a race. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, You know, it, it adds to the pressure and then, you know, obviously Tony coming in and uh, doing really well and, you know, winning a couple races. And then, you know, I still haven't won. And, you know, rule number one in racing is you're supposed to be your teammate because you're obviously on the same same equipment. So, uh, you know, it was definitely affecting me. You know, after uh, I can just feel my moods totally different this week ever since, ever since I won. And the pressure and just the outside noise was uh, – it would might have been bugging me a little more than, uh, you know, I led on. So, you know, as soon as I crossed that finish line, you know, it was just like finally, you know, all that hard work and everything paid off. Right. So let's talk about Tony being your teammate. Obviously, like you said, him coming in, get a couple of wins right out the gate, puts a little bit of added pressure on you, but I'm sure it has its advantages as well. So talk about that. Yeah. You know, me and Tony, actually, we get along really well and, uh, you know, we share a lot of information and talk and, you know, he's, he's a cool guy. He's a, he's a character for sure. He's a, he's a, he's a different, different guy, but, uh, you know, the whole morale of the team is really high because everybody's doing so well. And it's been a while since Yoshimura has won. And this is, you know, another weekend that we swept and it's been a long time since, you know, Yoshis did that and then now to do it a couple of times a year is, uh, it is awesome, but, uh, you know, we raced close and, you know, both of us want to win. But at the same time, you know, after both races, we were uh, cutting up and laughing and stuff. So uh, so everything's good. And like I said, I really like him. He's, uh, he's a character. He's, he's really funny and he's like impossible not to like. Well, it seems like he's enhancing the program as a whole and uh, obviously uh, forcing you to kind of step your game up as well. But you had your whole family there this weekend. Mom, dad, Tommy, Nikki, girlfriends, wives, fiancés, nieces, and even some friends from the OWB. So did anybody say anything to you, um, give you any advice, words of wisdom that resonated for your weekend? No, not really. Uh, I don't know. I had a really good feeling going into the weekend. 
weekend, and then one of my buddies, Scott Rice, who came down, he said, oh, I got a really good feeling about this weekend. And, uh, you know, they didn't really give me any advice like that weekend, but, you know, my brothers do help me out a lot, you know, during the week, the training with and, you know, things like that. But on a race weekend, I kind of like to do my uh, – do my own thing and uh, you know it did make it just that much sweeter to you know because you always as a younger brother you always want to you know make your older siblings proud of you and you know it's the same as like your parents as well you want your parents to be proud of you and you know you stand up on top of the box and you see people from your hometown there and it's just uh it was just really cool and you know, we are a close-knit family. Like, my, my nieces, they love coming up on the podium. And, you know, I told them they can't come up anymore unless I win. So, uh, they probably put more pressure on me than anybody. So, uh, so I'm glad they uh, they get to come up there. And uh, my dad's health hasn't been the greatest. So, uh, you know, he always talks about how when we do good or winning, that's like the best medicine for him. makes him feel really good. So, uh it just made it that much more special having my mom and dad there just because they've been behind me. As I said, after the race, you know, just as parents, not really just as far as racing, but, uh, you know, as life, as things come up and, you know, they're just, they're just great parents. And for them to, I'm neighbors with them. So they see how, you know, how much I've been putting into this and trying to, trying to get that win. This week's Product Spotlight, we're looking at an upgrade that you may or may have not made to your motorcycle. This upgrade involves comfort and if you're racing, performance. We're talking about the GP V1 seat from Saddleman. Check this out. Now I've been to the Saddleman factory in Rancho Dominguez, California, and I've seen just exactly how these handcrafted seats come together. Saddleman's business has been built on comfort and performance that comes from their Saddle Gel and Gel Core technology based seats, and this GP V1 is their most advanced street bike seat to date. The Saddle Gel isolates engine and road vibration, a common cause of rider fatigue. Saddle gel is a molded solid with fluid-like properties that will not slide to one side or move around in your seat like air or water in a plastic bag. Instead, the proprietary design eliminates pressure points at the hip bones and tailbone by evenly distributing your weight across the surface of the seat. The saddle gel is placed into a seat mold that is specifically made for each motorcycle model. From there, the saddle gel inserts are covered with a progressive density foam. Before the cover goes on, it looks like this. And with the cover on, it has a modern, sleek, purpose-built design. You'll notice that this material is smooth, and then on the sides, you have some serious grip. This grip will help you grip the bike better with your legs and make it easier to pull over from one turn to the next. You can see on the underside of this seat that it's constructed of heavy-duty and high-quality materials and as many rivets as you can possibly fit. I've used Saddleman seats for years, and I can tell you that it could be the most improvement in comfort for the least amount of money. And on those long days, you're seriously gonna appreciate it. Now, you can pick one of these up for about 200 bucks and it even comes with a matching cover for your rear seat. So that's the gel infused Max Comfort GP V1 seat from Saddleman Seats. And that's this week's Product Spotlight.
horrible. Weaving, weaving, criminal act. Look at you. Unbelievable. The front brake. That's the front brake. You saw his front brake slammed on. We hope you enjoyed the month of June highlights. And now it's time to announce the winner. Vance, the book bag. Thank you. All right, we've taken a random selection of names from our email list, put them in the bag. I'm going to put my hand in the bag, give it a good mix. And the winner is David Morata. Congratulations, David. Round of applause, everybody. Thank you to everyone who signed up for the newsletter. You're now an exclusive member of the Next Moto Champion Fan Club. If you haven't already signed up, do it now. I'm sure you already get tons of emails, so what's one more? Next month, it's another giveaway from our great sponsor, Bridgestone, for the month of July giveaway. You don't want to miss that. There will be more details on next week's show. Thanks again for tuning in, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Some amazing guests, and we're going to recap it here for you on the next Moto Champion. Guests, and we're going to recap it here for the. We're going to recap it for you here on the next Moto Champion recap show, brought to you by Yoshimira. Done. <laughs> done, Vance. <laughs> done. Done. Done.